Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video where we're going to be discussing the cost effectiveness acceptability curve. Let's go. So in general, the way a technology is deemed cost effective is that if it's computed ICER from the model is below a particular threshold. More accurately, it's when either the net monetary benefits equation or the net health benefits equation is greater than zero as denoted in these two equations here. This solution concept is contingent on the choice of threshold and as such, it is possible to make convenient threshold choices, whether intentionally or not, which deem our technology cost effective. Using the tools of probabilistic sensitivity analysis and simulation, we can visualize the degree of uncertainty that is associated with our cost effectiveness analysis and represent how our cost effectiveness analysis is supported by a belief of cost effectiveness at a particular threshold. So when we run a probabilistic sensitivity analysis, we're going to be going and plotting each one of these icers that go and come out of our model in each generation. This is going to be visualized by a set of points on our icer plane. What we do traditionally now is that we're going to go and put in this threshold, right? This we're going to call it lambda naught right here. And that's going to go and separate our region into two places. One which is cost effective, denoted in green, and one which is not cost effective, which is in red. Now, the question we want to go and ask is that what is the proportion of this simulation that goes and lies below this threshold lambda naught? And how does it change as our threshold goes and changes? We can go and think about plotting this relationship between our threshold value and our percentage of this population that it's cost effective for as follows by going and saying at lambda naught, it is about 50% cost effective. If we go and we increase our threshold or we go and we have a new set of numbers that are there going and cutting out some points, but also including some more. So we say that we could include more of that population here, but this is, you know, just in this example. Now, we want to keep doing this and that's the main idea of the cost effectiveness acceptability curve we just keep varying our threshold right across all values right all positive values really and we see what is the proportion of this simulation that lies under each one of these thresholds and that's what it will go and communicate and if we keep that up we get a curve now this is our cost effectiveness of uh, acceptability curve that we go and we have, otherwise known as a SEAC. Um, how do we incorporate thresholds in this and what interpretation does it go and take on? So if we have a threshold of lambda star, we're going to have a corresponding percentage of cost effectiveness that is associated with it. The way we report this result is that we say that at a threshold of lambda star, our technology is X percent cost effective. This means that it is deemed cost effective for X percent of the target population the treatment is considered for in the economic evaluation as represented by points on the ICER plane. So this is um, really an introduction to the cost effectiveness acceptability curve. You know, usually you'll go and see multiple of them, you know, plotted on the same graph. And in the next video, we're going to be talking about, you know, what interpretation, you know, multiple SEACs go and have and some significant results that they go and they have there. So I hope this video goes and provides a good introduction to the cost effectiveness acceptability curve. I will see you guys next time. Take care.